Welcome to a new In The Mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. Before I get started, I'm going to take a second to remind you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification icon because that's the only way you will know for sure when I upload new videos. I'm going to start this mail bag with a lamp base. This is a retro style E27 lamp base. It was supposed to be this uh, antique brass look, but I must say it looks browner in the images, closer to a brass look. In reality, it's more of a gray color, something like that. It also depends on the lighting. It doesn't feel like it's super high quality. The metal is pretty thin, so you'll probably need to handle it with care. It's very light and I think they mentioned this is made out of aluminium in the product description. It has this uh, built-in switch which is a uh, continuous rotation. It's, it has this uh, really nice positive click and uh, I quite like it but it's kind of flimsy in here. Look at how it's moving in here. It's a good thing that they have integrated the switch because if I were to add an external switch it would be pretty hard to find the vintage looking one locally and it will have to go on the wire. And I'm probably going to use this as it is with its uh, a base something like this sitting flat on the table but uh, using the uh, provided hardware you could install this on a wall as well you might even extend the uh, socket from the base using some copper pipe piece or you could install this on the ceiling and just drop a wire from the base to the socket now to go with this i also ordered some of this uh, retro looking uh, braided twisted wire i went with a brown color and this inside it's just two wires of 0.75 millimeters but that should be good enough for something like six amps if the rating on the wires is uh, true so it's more than enough for a typical light bulb this is a uh, five meter long bundle piece of wire so it should be more than what i need for this lamp i'll just need to add something like an uh, uh, european uh, two pin plug to this I don't have a retro looking one but uh, it shouldn't matter that much because the socket is usually hidden behind some objects or furniture so it won't be visible. And of course this will be running on an Edison type bulb. I have one of these, it's a classical filament type bulb and it glows really nice. But you know what else is really nice? The fact that you can order 5 PCBs for just $2 from JLCPCB. You can even choose your own solder mask color with no extra cost. And they provide affordable laser cut steel stencils to help you with the assembly. Go check them out. Next I needed a new GPS module because I'm building a new RC plane and this time I went for the BN220. I think last time I showed the GPS module it was the BN180. I've seen the BN220 shows better sensitivity in practice when compared to the 180 so I went for the better one this time but they're similarly priced and the 180 worked good enough for my RC plane, no complaints. These usually ship with this uh, short JST wire and a piece of uh, double-sided tape for mounting. If you have any GPS tracking project in mind, you can check this out. They're pretty good for what their cost is. A link to this will be provided in the description below the video. The next item was quite interesting when I saw it in the suggested products panel and you might look at this and think, what? USB Type-C to a DC jack? Surely that can't be mentioned in any standard and you are right I'm pretty sure the USB standard doesn't allow for such a thing to exist and yet it does and uh, this guy is specifically programmed to negotiate the USB Type-C interface through power delivery protocol to 20 volts and connect that to this uh, 5521 DC barrel jack at the other end. So inside this Type-C connector we can expect a small decoy chip that handles the USB Type-C negotiation and uh, triggers that on 20 volts. You can also order this configured for 15 volts or with a different size barrel jack at the other end. And this could prove quite useful for powering something that doesn't talk power delivery protocol from a power delivery power bank. Extra care needs to be taken, make sure the device you are connecting uh, can handle the 20 volts. So I will be attaching a label to this cable to avoid any accidents. Let's put this to a test. This is a uh, power delivery compatible power bank and I have my multimeter here with a female DC jack and yes 
it goes to 20 volts so this cable correctly negotiates the power delivery protocol for the voltage it was advertised but the wire doesn't feel like it could support too much current so i wouldn't let this run unattended uh, on anything more than like 20 watts next i have a set of four small heat sinks and i think these are mainly targeted at single board computers like the raspberry pi but you can use them on anything else that needs cooling i particularly like these because they have some decent height on the fins which provides better cooling than the same heat sink uh, with lower height on the fins it's pretty useful to have a selection of these in your toolbox because you can sometimes build a project and you might have something like an audio amplifier it's class d it's pretty efficient so all it needs is one of these small heat sinks to keep it cool small linear voltage regulators could also benefit from having one of these installed small leds as well as you can see they already have the uh, double-sided tape attached to the bottom and i've done a video on the subject of thermally conductive double-sided tape it's vlog 195 which i will link on screen right now so you can check it out next i have a set of five pieces jst three pins male with wires and female smd connectors these are jst sh they are 1.0 millimeter pitch and the wires are 28 awg i needed the uh, female connectors with wires to interface to a connector on a flight controller board i just want to add some digital rgb leds on one of my rc planes and this connector will make it easy to connect to the flight controller board without soldering anything and will give me the option of being able to disconnect the uh, leds if i ever need to do that but these could be used in uh, your own projects as well these days it seems fewer people are designing boards with the classical 0.1 inch headers as boards get smaller people tend to use these smaller pitched connectors to save space next i have a tool also for my rc hobby a bearing removing tool i don't replace bearings too often on the motors uh, i use on my rc planes but i think it will be useful to have something like this here in the lab whenever you have a bearing captive you can insert this tool until it makes a perfect fit with the uh, inside ring of the bearing and then you can pull the bearing uh, for extraction not sure how that would work you would probably need to just put some kind of lateral pressure to increase the friction for uh, extracting the bearing because i would imagine pulling straight would just release the tool from the bearing now this is obviously intended for small bearings there are some markings here up to 14 millimeters internal diameter but that covers everything i work with anyway so it's going to be good enough so i hope i can put this to a good use anytime soon next we're going to led lens territory and i have a few different models here i wasn't aware you could find these lenses for 50 50 type leds but here they are they exist and they could be useful on your next project uh, for example with the very popular sk6812 rgb leds in 50 50 package these are 140 degrees and these are 180 degrees but you can find them in a variety of other angles they usually come in a pack of 100 pieces and like i said you could improve the visibility on your next led project using something like this in terms of mounting these just go over the led package it's kind of a friction fit but it's not exactly mechanically rigid so uh, you would want to enforce that with some glue if this were to be used in, in an application with vibrations or something like that because just on their own i don't think they're going to stand a lot of vibration before they come off the led i also ordered some bigger lenses these are 20 millimeter in diameter and i've got some uh, 120 degrees frosted type and 60 degrees these are not frosted but still they have a pattern in the lens i don't know how this uh, pattern would be called but it's useful to spread the light then you would use these in um, higher powered applications with leds like the one watt two watt or three watt uh variants i believe all of these uh, lenses are made of uh, pmma also known as acrylic which seems like the obvious choice for this application because it's cheap and easy to work with but i'm not sure how well this material will cope with the high temperature possibly dissipated by an led because there is no data sheet associated with these but i would imagine it starts to get problematic at some point these might start to melt or get yellow because of the temperature 
I'm thinking of maybe getting another Raspberry Pi 4 for running a DIY NAS server on my network. Nothing fancy, no redundancy, just handling two USB 3.0 external hard drives that I would normally be connecting to my computer, so I just want to have those accessible on the network. But we all know the Raspberry Pi has some cooling issues as I've shown in Volog 264. I've ordered two different designs to check out and pick the one to use on the new build. So these two are constructed fairly different. They're both made from aluminium, but this one on the left uh, is lighter uh, and it, it's just a case around the Raspberry Pi while well, this one on the right is in its own right a case and heatsink at the same time because it sandwiches the Raspberry Pi in between these thick pieces of aluminium so for the one on the left you're not going to be getting the uh, required uh, cooling for running the uh, Raspberry Pi at higher loads, maybe just at light loads because of the uh, ventilation holes, but I'm pretty sure you will need to add a heatsink to the CPU, maybe something like the heatsinks I've shown earlier would work uh, well with this um, perforated case. However, with the case on the right, uh, they even supply you with the uh, thermal pads inside, so once you sandwich this on your Raspberry Pi, this will ensure cooling as well. But there is a catch, the one on the left is four times cheaper than the one on the right, and you can imagine why it's way cheaper to have this folded aluminum and punched metal construction than it is to have this uh, aluminum construction which is like, I don't know, uh, I, I'm not sure if this is forged or if it's CNC'd, but I would imagine it's much more expensive to manufacture something like the one on the right. So for my new server build, I think I will go with the more expensive case, which will provide better cooling. That was all for today. I hope you found something interesting to order in this mailbag. If you did, I would appreciate some feedback in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time with a new video.